Hi everyone. Pretty much everyone loves complaining about tax, so we're going to make sure that we understand how it works inside and out. That way, we can complain about it better than anyone else at the dinner table, and we'll also be able to nail any tax questions that get thrown at us in the HSC. We'll first start by introducing income tax, and then we'll look at what taxable income is. You might also be able to tell that I was hungry during the making of this video. Let's say I'm at the beach and I want to go and get some chips for everyone. I have to walk to the fish and chip shop and get some. On my way back to the beach, I see some seagulls, and so I decide to be nice and chuck them a few chips. When I get back to the sand, of course, my friends want to take some, and I eat the rest myself. Okay, you might be wondering what this has to do with the topic of this video. Let's say that the chips that I first get at the shop are my gross income. That's the total or maximum amount of chips that I start with. That could be my salary, say over an entire year. Then on the way back to my friends, I charitably give some to the seagulls. This would be an allowable deduction from the amount of chips I have. Neither I nor my friends can eat these chips. They're forever gone, but to a good cause. What I'm left with is an amount of chips that my friends have access to. They can and will take some of these chips for themselves, even though I was technically the one who went to the shop and got them in the first place. Let's call this my taxable chips or taxable income. In this video, we get up to this point, calculating taxable income, the amount of chips I get back to the beach with before my friends get to take any. In the next video, we'll take a look at the amount of tax or chips that my friends actually get to take off me. I'll first clarify that you don't need to go and remember all different types of allowable deductions. If you want to do that, you can study tax accounting at university. Allowable deductions in the real world might be business-related expenses, charitable donations, or contributions to your superannuation account. There are many different ones, but we'll focus on a couple of the more common ones as examples. Let's start with business-related expenses. These are business costs incurred directly in earning your income. For example, if you're a plumber, then you need to buy tools and pipes, and probably a big van to carry all your stuff in. You can subtract the cost of these from your gross income to then find your taxable income. Let's do an example. Jess, the plumber, earns a yearly salary of $100,000, plus she gets $15,000 per year for renting out a room in her house. As a plumber, she paid four thousand dollars in car expenses, twenty thousand dollars in materials like pipes and tools, and six hundred dollars on work mobile phone bills. We need to find her taxable income. Remember that taxable income is total yearly income minus allowable deductions. Her taxable income would be her total income, salary plus rental income, minus her allowable deductions. Her allowable deductions in this case are her business-related expenses. This gives us ninety thousand four hundred dollars as her taxable income. This is not the amount of money that the government gets to keep. Let's make sure that's clear. Taxable income is simply the amount of money that the government uses to then calculate tax. This is like the amount of chips that I arrived back at the beach with before my friends got to take any. There are two things that we should clarify here. Taxable income is derived from all income. This might include rental income, income from other jobs, or income from interest on an investment. The second thing is that she can only make allowable deductions for things that are directly related to earning money as a plumber. So no matter how addicted you are to caffeine, a morning coffee is not a business-related expense. Here are some more allowable deductions: superannuation, which is a compulsory savings that you can only access when you retire. Hex repayments, which are payments back to the government to repay your university or TAFE education, union membership fees, health insurance contributions, and charitable donations. Again, you don't need to remember which deductions are allowable tax deductions. All of the questions in past HSC papers specify the allowable tax deductions, but these are some of the more common ones. Why might the government let charitable donations be an allowable deduction? Let's do some maths and find out. Say charitable donations are not allowable deductions. If you earn fifty thousand dollars in a year and pay sixteen percent in tax, you pay eight thousand dollars in tax. Then you want to donate two thousand dollars to a charity, 
And so at the end of the year, you keep $40,000, your total income minus the tax, then minus your donation to charity. Now, let's say donations are an allowable deduction, meaning that they reduce our taxable income. Because the donation was $2,000, our taxable income is now $48,000. We get taxed 16% of this, which is $7,680. The amount of tax that we pay here is less, since the donation was an allowable deduction. So we take home $50,000 minus our donation of $2,000 minus the tax of $7,680, leaving $40,320. The thing to note is that we calculated tax after deducting the donation, so our taxable income became $48,000 rather than $50,000. Since we deducted the donation from our income, we paid less tax in the end. So giving away money to charity reduces the amount of tax you pay, and this incentivizes people to donate to charity. Cool. Let's wrap this up with a review. Income tax basically works like this. We start with gross income, then we have allowable deductions, and then this gives us taxable income. From taxable income, we can then calculate tax, which we will do in the next video. We find taxable income by taking total yearly income and subtracting allowable deductions. Allowable deductions are basically tax-free expenses, since they aren't included in your taxable income. You don't get taxed on them. Don't worry about remembering all the different types the question in the exam will specify. Also keep in mind that gross income doesn't just include salary or wages, it might include other things like earning money from renting out a property. In summary, we can see that the maths itself here is really basic, but it's important that we spend the time outlining the concept. Because as we will see in the next two videos, if you don't have a solid understanding of how tax works, you can easily miss out on a four or five mark question. Cheers for watching everyone. Next video will take the next step and find out how many chips we have to give our friends as tax on the beach. See you then.